Right, back in the digger. I should have pulled that forward a bit. Fuck it, anyways. Where the fuck's all the teeth gone off the bucket? All the fucking teeth are missing off the bucket. It's a different bucket. I oh know, it's not. Maybe he prefers to have the teeth gone off it. Concentrate her. <laughs> it's too early in the morning for like doing this and talking. <laughs> Seriously, where's the tea gone off the bucket? <laughs> oh, she couldn't. It's Tuesday, the 3rd of August. I have my Arctic test tomorrow. Second Arctic test. So I done my Arctic test last month. I think it was last month. Yeah, I think it was last month, and uh, I failed it on reversing around the corner. So I was reversing on the blind side, which is the left over there, and 90 degrees around the corner, and I just ended up on the other side of the road curb up on the, or wheel up of the, the trailer up on the curb, and it's an automatic fail, um, so that was, yeah, that was a great tree, that's what I failed on, um, so I have my retest tomorrow in Tullamore, and I'm a bit more prepared for now this time, um, so I wanted to talk about very first job I ever got <laughs> driving a HTV. I got a job driving a tipper truck with a lad and uh, it was a Renault, it was a 141 Renault tipper truck and I lied about how much experience I had, I had zero experience especially in a tipper truck and uh, it was just, I was probably only with them for Roughly somewhere between four and five hours. And it was a bad four or five hours. 
and uh, it was just bad from the get-go. So I went in at seven o'clock in the morning, started this new job, and I was shitting it, I was rattling. Because I'd never driven a lorry on my own. Now I knew it wasn't going to be on my own, it was going to be with another lad. But still, this lad thought I had a few months experience driving these things and I didn't. So, first off, I got into the lorry and started up and let the air tanks build up and all that, whatever. So the mechanic that came over to me, there was a lorry in front of me. So the mechanic came over and he said, he's going to pull out the lorry in front of me and he wants me to pull out over out of the way so he can reverse that lorry back in where I was, out of the way. Because there was no one driving it. So that was grand anyway. Um, he pulled away and I was in the lorry. <laughs> now, so I was, um, I'd only driven one lorry at this point. It was a DAF. It was like a, a DAF for my test or whatever, you know. So I was always used to the handbrake being here on the the dashboard like normal because that's you know it's not one of the most common places if not the common place for the handbrake in a lorry and of course there was nothing there <laughs> so there was nothing there and I was like oh shit what the fuck am I going to do now so I actually got on my phone and tried to google <laughs> I tried to google where the handbrake was in a 141 tipper truck now you have to remember I told these ads I had experience and this wasn't my first time driving a tipper truck and uh, yeah and it was my first time it was an automatic and it was my first time driving an automatic as well because I'd done all my lessons and my testing or in a manual same as this I was I think that one was a four over four if I remember correctly but anyways um yeah so that was bad so I had to actually I couldn't figure out on Google where the handbrake was so I had to get out of the truck go over to the truck that the mechanic was sitting in waiting for me to pull out and I was like, hey lad, <laughs> where, where's the handbrake in the truck? <laughs> and just the look he gave me, he's like, you don't know where the handbrake is? I said, no, I don't know where the handbrake is. And he just got this, he had a real scowly face on him. And he got down out of the truck and he walked over. And he's like, there it is. And the, the, the fucking, the handbrake in this one was in, like almost behind the seat. You had to put your hand back, your left hand back, to pull the handbrake back. And that's weird. Now I would have never guessed that. I've seen the two hand. I, well, I seen there was two handles there. I seen one of the handles, and I was like, no way, that's the fucking the handbrake. I didn't know because I was always used to the handbrake being here, like a normal person. But anyways, that was grand anyway. Yes, pure embarrassed of course. But uh, fucking, it wasn't the end of the bad day, <laughs> not by a long shot. So. I actually brought the lorry over to another slight part of the yard where they were going to fill me up with some dirt that was there that had to be brought to one of their they had their own places where they, they, they dumped all the shit from sites and that so that was grand anyway I went over and I was able to get filled up and then um, your man got in beside me Tommy was his name absolute bang on lad so he was fucking sound out um, we had a great laugh in the lorry for the few hours I was there like, but uh I went down to the road, now this was a, a, an automatic truck, so the gears were down like at the side of the steering wheel where like, you know, as if you were turning on and off a light or something. So, um, yeah, but you pull it in, but yeah, fuck's sake. Oh, five, five foot of space there beside him and he wouldn't use it. Um, look at this, I over the line and everything, look, Jesus fucking Christ. Um, so that was grand anyway. Uh, I went out onto the road and he was saying to me that like, you can leave it in fully automatic or you can actually change them yourself. And of course, me, like a fucking idiot, had to start messing with it on the side of the road. And everything, like, is he letting me on? Is he letting me on? No. Um, so I'd start messing with it like a fucking idiot. And uh, I don't know what I'd done, but I put it into, like, second gear or whatever, and I went to take off. But then I, I went to I, what I thought put into third gear, but accidentally put it into neutral. And then there was a guy behind me in another truck trying to get out at the same time. Now, I was in the middle of the road at this point revving the bollocks out of the truck because I just put it into neutral I don't even know how and then I tried to put it back into first or something but it went into reverse and I started like <laughs> and I started like reversing and nearly hit the guy behind it was a nightmare right so I'd say your man knew at this point like this lad this lad doesn't know what he's on about like. so anyways fast forward a, a bit you know there was one point where I came down off a junction where there was a really tight right hand bend now 
thinking about it nowadays, I could probably take it because I could prepare for it properly. Like, but at the time, I went down and all like just was facing towards the ditch, had to shunt back and go back around. You know, it wasn't it wasn't a great turn, but I, I should have been able to take it. Like, if I knew, if I knew what it was at, I should have been able to take it. But anyways, I dropped off a couple of loads. It wasn't it wasn't too bad. You know, I was still it was still a weird just feeling being in the truck and actually working for the first time and so um, that was grand and I went on to uh, we were supposed to do a delivery to a house of like 804 or something like that or 4 inch down or whatever it was so I picked it up on here from the place and we were headed over to where it was being delivered so where it was being delivered was down at a house and the house was down as my man Davy and the house was down a lane and, I had, and near the end of the lane, heading down to the, the other part where the house was, there was a, fo- a 90 degree angle, like a 90 degree bend. So I went down and boom. Now this was a lane where this was the width of the lorry. Like. So anyways, um, I went down and I was in low, like the lowest gear to just get around this corner. Now I was looking in this mirror over here in the left mirror and I could see the ditch kind of getting close to the side of the lorry. But there was no space there, and again, it was a right angle turn, so getting the actual space around. Now, there was plenty of space to get around it. I was just inexperienced. You know, I could have probably had another foot or half a foot to maneuver around. But anyways, your man Tommy was beside me, and he goes, watch out for that ditch. Now, it was just a ditch. Even he was sitting there looking down at the ditch, it was just a ditch. Next thing we heard a kind of a bang, and we heard like going off. So we thought like, oh shit, the, one of the tires had to burst or something. So we got anyway, and um, what happened was, there was a metal pole in the ditch, completely invisible, couldn't even see it like, and it had pulled down one of the air tanks. And the air tank wasn't damaged or broken, it was just, the strap was broken off it and pulled down, and one of the crash barriers, the little shitty aluminium crash barriers, was like broken in half. Now, I didn't even hit it hard, it just pulled it off or whatever. The actual tires and wheels were grand like. And um, yeah, so we were sitting there literally stuck in the middle of the road because the wheels were locked solid at this point. Um, the mechanic came out eventually anyway, he wasn't actually too far away, he was down on a site not too far away. And the mechanic came down and he had a look and he's like, it wasn't actually that bad, he just took off the other air tank that was down on the ground. He tied up the, the tube so that we could just drop off the load and get the get the lorry back to the yard and it was grand it was working on one tank on the side like and um yeah it was an absolute mess a mess of a day so i remember like you know even the mechanic said to me he's like oh we have loads of those straps in the in the yard just put the tank back on put a new strap on it it'll be good as new and he said with the crash bar yokes he said we've got a pile of them in the yard as well i can just take take one off and replace it and it'll be back exactly the same. He said when when we get back to the yard, he says I'll have you back in the road in less than an hour. No problem. So actually I got back to the yard anyway. And your man Tommy went off to do a different job somewhere and I would sat in the lorry and I waited for your man to ring me. And he just rang me and said, Look, there's nothing I can do with you. You may just go home. And that was it. And then <laughs> So any confidence I had in driving was gone. I mean I was in the minus. You know, I was in the red with confidence for driving. And it actually took me a while, um, a good while, to actually f- uh, try and even look for another job. I'm talking probably a couple of months, you know, because the fear was in me now. And I was thinking, like, I was thinking, you know, what, like, geez, what am I for doing? Like, this is, so, this is such a stupid thing I'm doing. I, I can't drive these fucking things, you know. <laughs> but I'm glad I stayed out because, you know, I got into a job there very briefly a, a, a while later after that and then I got into a, a proper job uh, in another place in Kilkenny after that and I was with them for a couple of months and I drove like you know I was between like Leash and Offaly, Kildare, Carlow, Wexford, Wicklow, do you know what I mean? I drove a lot of places with them and it was cool. Um, then I left them and I got the job where I am now and I'm here just over two months as well. And it's grand, it's fairly local enough. I kind of just go between Leash and, and, and Kilkenny all day. Same route, same thing. It's grand, like. 
you think it gets really boring after a while, but it actually doesn't. You know, it's a grand, simple job. Now I've got my Arctic test tomorrow, so, you know, God only knows what, if I pass, you know, what the next few weeks will, will hold. Uh, might be, they, might be, they, you know, the place where I work, they have loads of Arctics there. I don't know if there's money to, to work, but I'll see, you know. I see people giving me crazy looks with the camera on my head <laughs> when driving through town. <laughs> sometimes I have it on my head, sometimes I don't. So anyways, it's uh, I'm not sure how this is going to be edited, but this could be two days after the last part. It's like uh, I had my Arctic test yesterday and I passed it with flying colours the second time. It's not the first time I've done it, but I... Uh, it doesn't matter, it's done now and it's sent away and I'll have it probably next week, I'd imagine. Five to ten days is all I said. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to be put on an Arctic and work. I don't really mind either way, like if um, if I uh, if I'm needed where I am at the moment for another while, that's absolutely fine, you know. Um, I'm in no rush. You know, there's no panic like at the moment. It is that absolutely no panic. But I tell you, like my nerves before the test was brutal. Like I was, um, I done an hour of that driving before the test, and my nerves were a bit kind of at me at at that point as well. But you know, all the lessons before that, I was fine, and I was just driving around like I would normally would like and. So, obviously, you know, I done on my first attempt at the Arctic test. I done a reverse uh, blindside around the corner, and I just wasn't prepared for it. You know, I was doing reverses from the other side. So that was grand anyway. Um, I was practicing my blindside reverse, got it down perfect, and then on the day of the test, he brings me in and does a reverse from the other side. It's like. And again, and uh, you know, I don't know. I'd practiced them before, but wasn't practicing them nearly enough because everybody I'd heard of was getting uh, the blindside reverse. So I actually messed up. I was too close to the corner with the back of the trailer when I started the maneuver, the first maneuver, and uh, when I went back and went to turn the trailer in. Because I was too close, the trailer turned in too late. And then eventually, I was over at the curb here with the back wheel. And when I swung over with the front of the tractor unit, I touched the wheel off the curb. And I just pulled it forward. Now, thinking about it this morning, he probably saw it as a shunt. Which technically, it kind of is a shunt. Um, but I just straightened the whole thing back up. And I pulled it forward about an extra 10 or 15 feet. And then I just, I just kind of like took a few deep breaths, trying to calm myself down, no panic. And I just glided in around like a snake. And it was grand. And I, and I, at this moment, I still thought I'd failed it because, you know, I'm not sure why. I just, like I thought after the first, reverse maneuver now it was nothing dangerous nothing bad happened just my position was off and i shouldn't have actually went back i should have i should have waited or i should have i should have lined myself up better but should have would have could have that doesn't matter you know i i realized the mistake that i made and i corrected it and then i done it and it was grand but um yeah, and then, so after the reverse maneuver, when I thought I'd actually failed it, I seemed to re completely relax then, because in my head I was just like, oh, I'm in work, I'm just driving around, there's a lad here beside me. And then I was trying to trying to, trying to uh, imagine that he wasn't even there at all, you know? And, I, and then I had a grand drive. And the thing is, right, I only got two two marks against me on my... Um, on my sheet, on my, my pass sheet that I got. One of them was for the reverse maneuver that I, I fucked up, right? I took a chunt on, that's fair enough. He done me on that. 
And then the other one was just, I had it in neutral and I tried to take off. That was it. And that was actually the first thing that happened. When I got into the lorry and your mum was talking about her, blah, blah. And then I went to take off from where I was outside the test centre and I fucking had it in neutral. And then, right, I made a stupid, another stupid mistake by just saying, I'm not, no, it's not even a mistake. I just said, oh, that's just my, I, I said something like, oh, sorry, my nerves. And he just goes, no, that's not your nerves. If you didn't put it into gear. And he is correct. <laughs> I forgot to put it into gear. But it's just the way he said it. Now I laugh about it. It's kind of funny. But he said it once, and he said it, I think, once, time, another time after, about the gears. Like, but, you know, at the end of the day, he said it was a good drive. And he just said, keep driving the way I'm driving, and it'll be grand. So that's it. Arctic test done. License on the way. Not sure if I'm going to be put into an Arctic straight away or anything like that. <clears throat> but um, it is a horrible, horrible day. We have a, we have a storm warning here for um, for Ireland. I'm pretty sure it's the whole country. I'm pretty sure it is. Um, didn't we start a lot earlier nowadays? It's well, it's it's five to seven in the morning. I'm actually a bit late this morning. Um, for me first load like but uh, is that the case down there no that's not exactly where's the case gone what's going on there it is there hold on no a second oh shit I don't know what way they're doing this now oh look I know I see it now I see it now I see it now see I wasn't here yesterday so there's a lad in the digger here that's going to be here for a couple of weeks and he's unreal Jeez, it's weird being up around here with no like mad. Uh, uh, I need you. Ah, See the line of the of the of the track. We're following that with the corner of the body or the the, the, the back of the wheel even. You're looking. This is my really savage tutorial about how to reverse a rigid. Oh, it's up. Okay. 